Hello and welcome to this walkthrough on how to set up SQL Server locally using Docker on Ubuntu or an Ubuntu-based distribution. In this walkthrough, I'll demonstrate how you can run SQL Server locally using Docker and also how you can persist the data locally so that when the image container is deleted, the data remains. As you can observe on my screen, I have a diagram just to kind of help you visualize what we're going to do. First, uh, we're going to create a set of directories for data, logs, and secrets, and we're going to grant them uh, some read and write permissions. Then we're going to generate a SQL Server compliant password using pwgen. After that, we're going to issue the Docker command to pull the SQL Server uh, image container. And then finally, we're going to generate some SQL tables and populate with data. And then we're going to delete the image and the container and reprovision just to make sure that our data persisted. So with that said, um, I'm, doing, I'm going to jump over to my terminal and we're going to get started. So the first thing I want to bring to your attention here is just uh, the path to the directory that I'm going to create those three folders that I talked about just previously. Um, your path does not have to match mine. And you can pick your own path. Just make note of it because we're going to use it later when we issue the Docker command. So the first directory that I'm going to create is for data. The second one is for logs. And the last one is for secrets. So just to kind of point this out here, um, some commands I'm going to type out. Other commands I will just copy and paste just so I don't make any mistakes. All the commands that I'm, I'm using right now, I'll put in the description box for later along with some of the links um, for some of the websites that I'm going to be visiting uh, throughout this walkthrough. Okay, so by doing all this, I have the three directories created. So the next thing I want to do um, is to, I'm going to open up a new terminal tab here. And then I'm going to j uh, jump over to my browser real quick. So I'm going to use a tool called uh, pwgen. And it's available on Ubuntu from versions 18.04 all the way up to 22.10. So um, if you don't have this tool I'll show it installed, I'll show you how to install it. But I'm going to use it just to kind of generate a password uh, to meet the password complexity policy. Now, you don't have to use this tool. You can choose whatever tool you want, or you can even type it out, whatever pa whatever you want, as long as the password that you create it meets the complexity that is specified by the Microsoft password policy documentation. So I will jump back to the terminal. And in order to install this tool, first, we're going to do sudo apt get update. And then we're going to do sudo apt get install pwgen. I'll enter my password. And for me, because I already have it installed, you notice here that it's going to say it's already on the newest version. For you, we'll probably just install it. I'll clear the screen here, and then I'll issue the command to generate the password, passing two parameters to it, dash s and dash y. Now, what does dash s and dash y do? If you scroll down to the options, you'll see dash y includes at least one special character in the password, and dash s just generates a completely random, hard to memorize password. And see here, we need a non alphanumeric character um, and then just other stuff. Okay. So if I jump back here, I click enter, and it generates uh, a bunch of random passwords. Um, one thing I will just point out here is make sure whatever password you pick out of this, um, it doesn't have like any quotation marks or stuff like that because it might interfere with the Docker command that we're going to issue later on. So just make sure that you keep that in mind. All right, jumping back to the other terminal. Now this is my first going to be my first copy paste command. And I'll walk you through what I'm doing here. So this is a typical uh, Docker command to pull the image container and then run it. Um, so 
this is the first part the second part is just accepting the eola from microsoft and then here's where we're specifying our password we already talked about the complexity of the password and what it should be and then we specify the port specify a name and a host name these can be anything you want you don't have to match them or you could if you want to then we specify the volumes for the directories that we created previously um, so the first part you just have to specify first pass um, dash v and then you specify the directory path for data so this first part here has to has to be your directory um, the path to that particular folder the second part can be exactly the same so it could be left the same you don't have to do anything and they're separated by a column and it's similar to the log and the secrets just make sure you're specifying dash v before um, you specify the path and finally we're just saying we're pulling this particular image and i'm pulling the latest sql server which is 22 as of creating this particular um, walkthrough so I'll press enter and it's going to go get that image and run it locally so i'll give it a couple of seconds here Okay, so now that it's complete, uh, the next thing I want to do is just make sure that it's actually up and running. So as you can see, it's up um, and running. If it exited, that means something messed up. Review the password. The most likely candidate uh, that you probably made a mistake on is either the password does not meet the complexity or the path is not uh, correct. If all is well, then we can continue. Um, the next thing we want to do is now connect to the SQL Server instance and then try to um, execute some SQL commands against it. So this particular uh, SQL Server local dev, this is what I named mine. Uh, you, if you if you use the same name and host name or the, the host name, then you should be uh, good to go. Uh, the next key, next command that I'm going to execute here. I'm going to specify that it's going to be on local host because that's where we're running this. Uh, particular docker container and the default because we don't specify password the default password is going to be sa or sorry not password username the password is going to be whatever we created up here so whatever we used up here you're going to use the same password down there so i'm just going to copy it and paste it and once you get this prompt that means everything is okay you're inside now you can issue some sql commands so the first command we're going to do is create for creating a database so you see here i created the database um, it didn't execute yet because it showed me number two on <laughs> line two so you need to enter the command go and it will create the database so now we'll switch to that database And then we'll go. So now we're in the context of Docker SQL tutorial, which is the database we just created. And now we can create the tables. Okay, and we're just gonna, we just created a table called what we learned uh, with three columns. One is step, one is description, and one is completed. Um, and then we're just gonna insert some data in there. So 
of course you can you don't have to use the terminal for this if you have an IDE it will make things a lot faster but I wanted to make it as compatible compatible as possible so I'm using the terminal and for this one actually I'll tell you what just to kind of speed a little bit uh, speed this up a little bit here um, I'm just gonna paste this And just to kind of speed this up, all I did was just create a new um, row. So I created two rows. The first row is um, with the following description and uh, step, and it's completed as one, so that's true. And then the second one is process data locally, uh, so it's not deleted after we remove the container. This is what we're kind of working on right now. And then if we do a quick select, we see that the tables have the data that we actually just added to it. So that's, uh, so that's good. So now what we can do is just exit terminal. Um, so we'll exit here. And then what we're gonna do is just to kind of make some space on the screen, I'm gonna clear this here. And I'm gonna go just kind of list the, the running containers. So first thing we wanna do um, if you remember back to the beginning when I was showing that diagram, we need to delete these particular tables. Um, or we need to delete the image and the actual um, container. So we need to stop it first before we can delete it. So we're going to go stop. And we're going to use the name. Oops. And it's just going to output that. And if I issue the same command as I did later, earlier, you'll see that it exited. So that means that this has stopped. Okay, so that's good. So the next thing I want to do is I want to delete. I'm going to list the images that I have. And I'm going to delete this particular image. So and in order to do that, we need to go sudo docker. Arm RMI or remove image and then we need to grab the image ID from here and I'll just paste it okay so my bad um, the reason this can actually we didn't we need to remove the the container first Ugh, I hate pressing control C all right sudo <laughs> docker rm and then we'll just copy this so that means that it moved so if i do sudo docker ps-a so all i i removed that container so now if i up and remove that image it should go away okay good so now that we have this the next thing we want to do is if i do another ls you'll see that this particular data still contains um, or sorry the folders that we created earlier are still there so if i cd into one of them and i do an ls you see all that information that it created when we were provisioning those tables and uh, and the and inserting the data so technically everything is still there so when we re-pull that image image container and then we run it then we should be able to get that data back that's the that's what we're trying to do now okay oops All right, so to reinstall or reset up all that information, all we have to do is reissue the command that we issued earlier, which is this one. So I'm not going to walk you through because I already did. So just you can either up arrow or repaste it if you saved it somewhere. And then if we run this command again, it's going to pull the image container again and then run the container for us. Okay, perfect. So I'm just going to use my up arrows here to navigate to the previous command. And what I'm going to do 
is this command. So I remember when we needed to connect to the server because I'm using the same, everything is the same. I haven't changed anything. I'm just connecting back to the SQL server local dev that we created, that we just provisioned right now. If I click enter, it's going to go back in there. And again, we just want to go and paste. Actually, we have to type this one out. So we'll go opt. And then bin. And then you go SQL command. And then dash s, local host. Same thing as we did before. Dash u, specify the username, which is sa by default. Dash p. We'll just use this password that I used up here. Interpretation marks connected. So now we're not going to recreate anything because technically everything should be the same. We shouldn't have to do anything because every we remapped this new image that we pulled back to the, the folders that we created earlier. So all we have to do right now is first, um, we're going to check what database we have existing. So we're going to make sure that the database we created earlier still exists. And to do that, we can do select name. And then we're just going to specify a couple more parameters here. Or columns that we want to display. So, so we're going to see the create date as well. Because I want to show you that it was created today. Um, databases. And click go. So we see that this is what we created. And today is February the 26th. And we just created it uh, just recently. So this is the, the database that we create. So we're going to use that database and we're going to check that the data actually, um, the rows within this, uh, the tables and the rows are still still exist. To do that, we're just going to switch to that database. Oops. So we change into the database and then we'll just go select star from what? We learned and we'll go. And as you can see, um, even though we deleted the image and the container, the data still persisted. Um, and then, yeah, it's, so it's still there. So now we can just exit and exit. And that pretty much um, brings us to the end of this walkthrough. I hope you found this useful. And thank you again for watching.